Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have a very intriguing problem for you all today. Uh, this problem is from the Elmo math competition. Uh, so there's a certain summer math program in the US for students preparing for the IMO. And the Elmo is a sort of contest that's as a part of that summer program. Um, so there's a very silly website for it, which I'm gonna put uh, in the description of my video. Uh, so if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm gonna go over the solution. So we have a triangle ABC uh, with ortho center H, let M be the midpoint of BC, and let P and Q be any two points um, on the circle with diameter AH uh, so that PQ passes through point M. We wanna show that the ortho center of triangle APQ lies on the circumcircle of ABC, all right? Uh, so the first thing I noticed um, is that there's a very well-known theorem that says that H and M, the line through those two points has to pass through this intersection point right here. Um, so it's a well-known theorem, but it's also a special case of actually the original problem. Because if you let point P be equal to point H, um, then if you draw the line through M and P and you let it hit um, the circle with diameter AH at another point Q, then that triangle APQ would be a right triangle, and so its ortho center would be point Q. And so point Q would have to be this intersection point. So I'm gonna first prove that sort of special case of this problem, that MH and this intersection point are collinear. And then I'm gonna use that to prove the more general problem, which is the original problem. All right. So I'm gonna label um, this intersection point of the two circles as J. I wanna show that J, H, and M are collinear. Um, and I'm gonna do um, probably the most well-known proof of this fact, which I knew uh, before I solved this problem. So first I'm gonna let O be the ortho center of the of triangle ABC. And we know that angle AJH is 90 degrees. Um, so that means that if we extended JH to meet the circumcircle of ABC, um, the, the point at which it meets it um, would have to be a diameter with point A because that would mean that angle would still be 90 degrees. Um, so I'm gonna start writing some of this out. So angle AJH is 90 degrees because AH is a diameter. And angle AFH is 90 degrees. Uh, that's clearly true. Um, because H is the ortho center, so uh, CH has to be perpendicular to AF. Okay. So I'm going to draw the line uh, from A through point O, and I'm going to let it meet uh, the circumcircle at a point K. So AK is the diameter of ABC, and angle AJK also has to be 90 degrees because AK is a diameter. All right. So if angle AJH is 90 degrees and angle AJK is 90 degrees, then that means that JH and K have to be collinear. So basically that means I wanna show that points H, M, and K are collinear, because uh, that would show that JH and M are collinear, okay? But it's also a well-known fact, and I also knew this uh, before solving this problem, uh, that BHCK is a parallelogram. And this is not too hard to show, so I'll show it right now. Um, but basically, CK has to be perpendicular to AC, because since AK is a diameter. And uh, BE also has to be perpendicular to AC, because H is the orthocenter. And so BH is parallel to CK. And similarly, BK is parallel to CH. Um, so that um, proves that that is a parallelogram. Okay. Um, okay, so BHCK is a parallelogram. So H, M, and K have to be collinear. And that's because the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Um, so since M is the midpoint of BC, H, M, and K are collinear. And so since J, H, and K are collinear, and H, M, and K are collinear, then that means that J, H, and M have to be collinear. So I did all this work just to prove that J, H, and M are collinear, 
but that was actually a well-known fact uh, that I knew before solving the problem. I've used it probably around uh, maybe a little less than 10 times uh, throughout my life. So now that I've shown JH and MR collinear, I'm going to draw that segment. And I'm going to hide points K, O, and the diameter, because I just use those to prove that fact. Uh, but now that I've already proven it, I'm going to erase them. Okay. So back to the original problem, how do we prove that the orthocenter of triangle APQ lies on the circumcircle of triangle ABC? So one, so the main definition of the orthocenter is it's the intersection of the three altitudes of the triangle. Um, but I found this a little hard to apply in this case. And so there's an alternative characterization of the orthocenter, which says that it's the point on one of the three altitudes. So if you just pick one of the altitudes, let's say the one through point A, it's the unique point on that altitude so that when you reflect it, it lies on the circumcircle of triangle APQ. So I've, I've sort of mentioned that characterization on my channel a few times before, and so I'm not gonna prove it out, um, but if you'd like and you haven't seen it before, I'd highly recommend trying to prove that. Um, so basically, I'm gonna draw this perpendicular through A to PQ, and I'm gonna let it intersect the bigger circle PQ and the smaller circle at three different points. So I'm going to call them L, N, and R. And basically, um, the, the theorem I just mentioned, it says that L is the orthocenter of triangle APQ if and only if the reflection of L over PQ uh, lies on the circumcircle of APQ. So that's what I'm going to try to show here. If I can show that the reflection of L over PQ is point R, then that means that L has to be the orthocenter of triangle APQ. And if that's true, then we've solved the problem because we've shown that that orthocenter lies on the circumcircle of triangle ABC. Okay. So how do I show that LN is equal to NR? So first I'm going to um, note a certain um, another circle um, in the problem. So we have a lot of right angles. Um, so you have angle A and M is 90 degrees. Uh, that's because we defined N to be the perpendicular from A to PQ. And we also have angle AF, or I'm sorry, angle AJM is 90 degrees. And that's because AH is the diameter. And we also have angle ADM is 90 degrees, um, obviously, because uh, AD is perpendicular to BC. So points A, N, F, D, and M all lie on a circle. So I'm going to write this out. So angle A, N, M is 90. Uh, angle A, J, M is 90. And angle D, A, D, M is also 90 degrees. So all five of those points have to lie in a circle. So I'm going to draw in that circle. Okay, so we have three different circles in the problem and they all pass through points A and J. Um, so I'm going to label these circles alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, alpha is the smallest, beta is the middle sized circle, and gamma is the big one. And I'm going to use a certain lemma called the power ratio lemma here. Um, so this lemma was brought up to me by someone on the Art of Problem Solving Forum, and I had forgotten it for a pretty long time, but then I rediscovered it in doing this problem. Um, so first I'm gonna note, so all three circles have AJ as a, as a radical axis. Uh, they all pass through those two points, and so there's actually a word for this. If three circles all share the same radical axis, then they're called coaxial circles. Um, and so the lemma that I mentioned, the power ratio lemma, it says that if you take any point on circle beta and you take the ratio of the powers of it with respect to alpha and gamma, it's the same for no matter what point you choose on the circle beta. So I'm going to start by choosing point N and I'm going to apply the power ratio lemma. Um, so if you haven't seen this lemma before, 
Um, I'm going to put a link to it um, in the description of my video, so you can check it out there. Um, okay, so if I start with point N, which is on circle beta, and I take the ratio of the power of it with respect to alpha and gamma, uh, the power of it with respect to alpha is NR times NA, and the power of it with respect to gamma is NL times NA. Um, so the ratio of those two is NR over NL. And we want to show that that ratio is 1, because like I said, if we show that NR is equal to NL, then that means that L has to be the orthocenter triangle APQ. Okay? So the, the power ratio lemma says that this ratio has to be the same for any point on the circle beta. So I'm going to choose another point. I'm going to choose point D, which also lies on the circle beta. And I'm going to um, calculate the same ratio of the two powers. Okay? So by the power ratio lemma, this, has to be the, this ratio has to be the same for all points on the circle beta. And D lies on beta. So I'm going to calculate it for point D. So I'm going to extend line AD to meet the circle gamma at another point, which... I'm going to call S, okay? And now if I take the ratio of the two powers of D with respect to alpha and beta, that would be DH times DA over DS times DA, okay? Actually, I, I think I flipped it here, um, but the ratio is equal to 1 anyways. But if you take the ratio of the, the powers of D with respect to alpha and gamma, it would be dh over da divided by ds over da, but dh is equal to ds, and this is using the fact that we know that h is the orthocenter of triangle ABC, and so by the characterization I mentioned earlier, uh, the reflection of h over BC has to lie on the circumcircle. So dh has to equal ds, and so this ratio has to equal 1. And so if that ratio equals 1, then this original ratio has to equal 1. And so that means that NR is equal to NL. So I'm just going to make a little bit of room here. So NR over NL is equal to 1. So that means NR is equal to NL. And that's what we wanted to prove. Because if NR is equal to NL, then that means that L is the unique point on this altitude from A, so that when you reflect it, it lies on the circumcircle. And that point is the orthocenter. That's one of the characterizations of it um, that I mentioned um, previously in my videos. So that, that solves the problem. So L is the orthocenter of a triangle APQ, and it also lies on uh, the circumcircle of ABC by definition, because we defined it to be um, the, the intersection of the altitude with that circle. And so that solves the problem. So this was a fun application of this power ratio lemma. Um, you can, there are ways to solve it using uh, just spiral similarities, um, but I think it's worth learning this power ratio lemma because um, it can uh, be very useful in a lot of problems. Uh, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone.